We are living in an ever-changing world of technology, and that means the need to have infrastructure in place to deliver that technology to consumers who are demanding more. Have you ever thought about what it takes to make sure what's available keeps up with demand, or in the case of 5G, what it means? Is it more than a mobile network? Just how fast is 5G, and what does it take to make it available, and what will it do to change the way we go about our daily lives? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. I've got just the person to answer those questions. Good morning to Jay Brown, the president and CEO of Crown Castle, based here in Houston, recognized as the nation's largest provider of communications infrastructure. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad to have you here because I want to ask a lot of questions that I just posed. But first, describe for people what does your company do? We own telecommunications infrastructure. So what we enable in the United States is the ability for people to use their cell phones. And that infrastructure mostly takes the form of telecommunication towers mm -hmm. and fiber optic cable. Mm -hmm. We've got about 40,000 towers in the U.S., and we've got about 75,000 route miles of fiber optic cable, mostly in the most densely populated areas. And the fiber optic stuff is underground primarily. Most of it is, it's about half and half. Some of it is, is hung and some of it is, is underground. Okay, we've been hearing a lot about 5G. What is it and how is it gonna change the way we communicate with each other? Sure, if you go back and think about the transition from 1G, that was when we just picked up a cell phone and we talked to one another yeah, on yeah. the phone. Amazing. Amazing, right? <laughs> and then 2G, we moved to where we could text one another. And then 3G, we started to look at the internet a little bit. Maybe if occasionally we could send a video to each other. When we got to 4G, then we could do mobile commerce. We could do almost anything with our cell phone that we could do when we were stationary and the internet was plugged into our device, mm -hmm. like a laptop or something else. 5G is going to enable us to move to where the communication is nearly instantaneous. So there will be no difference between the speed at which we are able to do things on a device as, as if it were plugged in. Um, in fact, two of the most important things about 5G are the reduction in latency. So that's the, the amount of time it takes when you push a button until right. you get a response. Right, right, right. Okay? That goes to about one millisecond. So it's instantaneous. Yeah. The other thing that 5G does that's really important is that it enables the number of connections inside of the wireless network. So you've looked down at your phone, I'm sure. Sure. You've seen five bars. Right. And then it's still spun and you haven't been able to do anything with the device. That's because the connections in the network are full. Mm -hmm. If you took 250 acres today in a 4G world, you could only connect about 4,000 devices in that 250 acres. In 5G, you connect, can connect a million devices wow. in that same area. So it enables connections. So how does it change in terms of infrastructure needs for 5G as opposed to 4G? What's the change in terms of what you have to prepare to do to accommodate 5G? Well, our customers are mostly the wireless operators. And what they'll use our infrastructure to do is come in and put new antennas, new base stations, new cabling that will enable 5G. So that's part of what will happen. So across our towers and across our fiber optic cable, they'll come and install more equipment uh, which is how we generate revenues. Okay, so it's dependent upon the companies then that are rolling it out. We've seen several companies advertising 5G's coming, 5G's sure. coming. You interact with all of them. Uh, are you, who competes with you? Not that you have a competitor, <laughs> but wh what is your competition? Most of, most of, there are two other public companies, large public companies here in the U.S. One is American Tower and one is SBA Communications. Mm -hmm. And we're all in the same markets, um, but most of the time inside of those markets, the assets themselves will be focused on maybe a, a particular geography. So everybody wants to avoid the proliferation of, of the kind of infrastructure so nobody builds the same infrastructure in the same locations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we would be focused on particular areas of the of the of the city what kind of challenges do you face in adding more infrastructure for example a lot of times when we've seen towers in various places around the community and we look at those towers and they all they look the same well, you can see that tower is that the kind of tower that you might have that is or, the kind of tower that we would okay have, yes. so we see those in different places and now we know that sometimes when communities are being asked to have towers in their communities, they'll say, well, we want improvement in the infrastructure, sure. but we just don't want a tower in our community. Sure. How do you navigate through that? Because I know some of there's going to be some pushback for that. Sure, absolutely. And Houston has been a model citizen for how to do that. Mayor Turner has been a great partner with us over the years. And every community wants to preserve the aesthetics of the community mm -hmm. and the feel of the community. And so we want to be good partners in the communities in which we live and work. And so we work with communities around what is important to them aesthetically as we put the infrastructure in. I think you're right. Everybody wants 
the cell phone device. They want the device to work uh, everywhere they go and all the time. Uh, and so the infrastructure is necessary, but how we put that infrastructure in in order to blend it into the existing aesthetics of the community is really important. One of the places that I think we did a good job of this is if you go downtown and you go to Discovery Green, right. um, we put in small cells which are connected by fiber. Those are places where the wireless carriers are broadcasting their spectrum. And they're, uh, they're hidden so well, I don't think anybody would even notice. We've, hit, we've hidden them in things like lights uh, and other existing infrastructure. So it didn't change the aesthetic of Discovering mm -hmm. Green, but it did bring uh, a service to the community. And that's part of the future, you think, in terms of making that happen Absolutely. What's next? Over well, the horizon, for, for, is there something beyond 5G that's cooking right now? Well, there's you know 6G in the, in the works, <laughs> okay. uh, but we're probably a decade away from that. So I think 5G is probably a decade long run, um, and consumers will start to see the devices that are 5G enabled as we get into the back half of 2020 and into 2021. So not long from now? Not long from okay. now. Not okay. long from now, but a long runway from there. Thank you, Jay, uh, for getting us up to speed. I think, I, I don't know about you, but I feel so much more knowledgeable now. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for the time. I appreciate Great. it very Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Good luck to you as you continue doing what you do to help us get ready for the next wave, okay? Thank you. Just ahead.